In recent weeks, the United States has seen the largest surge in the number of novel coronavirus infections since the start of the pandemic. Health officials have warned that the virus can spread through close contact with an infected individual. In October, the Centers for Disease Control revised and expanded its guidelines and acknowledged that the virus can spread through small airborne droplets that we exhale and can sometimes travel distances greater than six feet and remain in the air for hours. The agency said the risk of transmission increases in enclosed spaces and those with poor ventilation. In order to visually illustrate those risks, the Washington Post used a high-tech infrared camera capable of detecting exhalation. The camera's advanced technology is more typically used in military and industrial settings, such as detecting methane gas leaks in pipelines. In 2013, it was deployed by law enforcement during the 20-hour manhunt for the Boston Marathon bombers. The highly sensitive camera detects variations in infrared radiation that are not visible to the naked eye. The camera was fitted with a filter that specifically targets the infrared signature of carbon dioxide, the gas we exhale. The carbon dioxide is then used to map the partial path of these nearly invisible airborne particles, including droplets that travel within our exhaled breath in real time. A highly sensitive digital filter is applied here to emphasize air flows. A virus, when airborne, will move with the airflow shown by the infrared camera. Here we see a person exhaling particles, and if present an airborne virus, like the novel coronavirus, will move with the heated carbon dioxide airflow captured by the infrared camera before dissipating from view. You are not directly seeing uh, maybe the droplets. What you're seeing is the overall effect of this breath plume that's coming out. The Post used the camera system to illustrate how air flows, capable of transporting airborne viral particles transmitted in our breath, could travel under various circumstances and spread COVID-19. According to experts who spoke with the Post, the footage underrepresents the potential risk of exposure from these airborne particles capable of potentially transmitting the virus. Those particles spread farther and linger longer than the visible exhalation plume, which dissipates quickly to a level of concentration that is no longer detectable by the camera. Environmental factors such as airflow in a space, wind, and sunlight can dampen the transmission of the virus even when in proximity of a person infected. As temperatures drop and people move indoors, family gatherings can become super spreader events. Winter basically it brings more people indoors where there's more crowding and there's less room for social distancing. Because the coronavirus is a virus that can spread distances farther than six feet, Precautions such as social distancing are not silver bullets when it comes to gathering indoors. You have a number of people in an indoor environment, the virus can kind of continuously build up. And, and that, I think, is, is one of the biggest factors to watch out for as we get into the winter season. In this video filmed indoors, two people are talking, one foot apart. The people who were filmed standing together without a mask were in the same household. The camera operator wore a mask and stood six feet away. Because they are close enough that you can see clearly how the exhaled air from um, one person reaches the other. According to Jimenez, the exhaled breath from each person reaches the other with little interference. The risk of transmission is increased by prolonged duration of exposure and concentration of viral particles in a confined space, like a room. So if you were within one meter of me, and you weren't wearing a mask, and we were talking for like 10 to 15 minutes, clinically, in, in, in infectious diseases and infection control, that's sufficient exposure to infect you from an aerosolized source of virus. Here is a person indoors, laughing without a mask, and another talking on the phone while wearing an unfitted surgical mask. These conditions simulate everyday situations where a virus could potentially spread. As seen in these examples, the breath plume changes directions when wearing a mask. When not wearing a mask, the droplets capable of transporting a virus project forward. If the mask is properly fitted, it can filter the droplets and redirect the exhalation. When this happens, there may be less of the virus in the air by the time it reaches the other person, reducing the chance of infection. So let's say you have 100 droplets coming out. 
from the mouth. By the time they get past the mask, maybe there's only 80, maybe there's only 50, depending on what quality of a face mask you're, you're wearing. But either way, it's going to reduce to some degree the number of droplets coming out. In this video filmed indoors, two people are talking and wearing masks. So much is contained by the mask. And yet I don't see any air crossing that, that zone at all. Masks can limit the transmission of the virus, but the risk of transmission to others increases if the mask is not properly fitted. If there is a person that's wearing a mask and is not well adjusted, what, what you see in the videos is that it goes backwards because the curvature of the mask sends the air behind you. So the last place where you want to be is behind a person whose mask is not fitting well because if there are viruses, that's where the viruses are going to be. The infrared camera provides a limited visualization of some of the ways that COVID-19 could spread in real time. As Americans struggle to contain this deadly pandemic and enter a season that celebrates the very activities that foster community spread, what we do to limit the virus's transmission is a matter of life or death. Ga naar Maurice.nl om nooit het laatste corona nieuws te missen.